Hello everyone, I am Dr. Matthew Thomas, specialist dermatologist working in Aster Clinic, King Faisal Road, Sharjah. Today I will be discussing about a very common problem that is hair loss. God has created only very few perfect heads and the rest he covered with hair. This is the statement that we use to console people with bald heads. But jokes apart, hair loss is a very distressing problem affecting men, women and children. Even though hair loss is not injurious to health, it can lead to depression, family problems and even suicides. 80% of our body is covered with hairs or hair follicles. But today we will concentrate on the hair loss of scalp because that is the most common and worrisome problem in our day to day life. Before we go on to the management of hair loss, we should know some basic facts about scalp hair. We have approximately 1 lakh hairs on our scalp and each hair grows about 1 cm per month. Each hair grows through a cycle which has got 4 phases and the first phase is called the, the growing phase that is the anagen phase which is the longest and lasts for about 1000 days or about 3 years. The second phase is the Catagen phase which is the involuting phase and that lasts for about 10 days only. And the next phase is the telogen phase that is the resting phase of the hair and that lasts for about 100 days. And the final stage is the exogen phase and that is the shedding phase. So out of these, the first phase that is the anagen phase is the maximum that 90% of our scalp hair is in the anagen phase. And each hair follicle goes through such 10 to 20 cycles in an average lifetime which means about 100 hairs will fall daily in a normal course. So only if that number exceeds above 100 then we need to worry. So apart from this normal hair loss we also have abnormal hair loss which is called as alopecia. Alopecia is a, a symptom which means hair loss and it is not a, a diagnosis. And coming to the uh, different types of hair loss that are alopecia, broadly we can classify the hair loss into two main types that is the physiological hair loss and the pathological hair loss. Physiological hair loss means the hair loss which happens due to the body's natural or normal mechanisms. For example, uh, the shedding of lanigo hairs in newborn babies and hair loss after delivery, hair loss during menopause or old age then the seasonal hair loss these are all the normal mechanisms of uh, hair loss whereas in the pathological hair loss which we are concentrating today uh, there are two main types one is the scarring type and the other one is a non-scarring type the scarring type of alopecia uh, occurs wherever there is a, a, a localized inflammation of the scalp for example in diseases like lichen planus, morphia or discoid lupus erythematosus or deep infections of the scalp, the uh, scarring alopecia occurs and in most of these cases this kind of alopecia is a permanent, uh, it, it uh, causes permanent hair loss. Whereas in the non-scarring type that is again classified into uh, different types, one is patchy and the other one is diffuse. The patchy alopecia, the common uh, type is alopecia areata, which is uh, the ring type of alopecia and that is usually a self-limiting disorder. It takes about one year for the hair to grow back. But there are different treatment options to uh, speed it up. And the other types of patchy alopecias are the alopecia that we see in syphilis, which is a sexually transmitted disease. Then there is a psychiatric disorder called as trichotillomania, where one has got a compulsion to pull his or her own hair. Then the diffuse type of hair loss which is the most common type that we see in uh, systemic diseases like anemia, thyroid deficiency, autoimmune disorders, uh, some drugs like antidepressants and anti-cancerous drugs, weight loss, acute stress uh, deficiencies. These are all the common causes for diffuse hair loss. Now coming to the the androgenic hair loss or the baldness which affects about 50% of men or 40% of women by the age of 50 
and this is usually because of heredity, environmental factors and hormonal factors. Apart from this, improper care of the hair like uh, excessive use of hair cosmetics, then excessive ironing or straightening of the hair, these all can lead to hair loss. Now coming to the management of hair loss, we have uh, seen the various causes of hair loss. So the management aims primarily at treating the cause. Having said the various causes of hair loss, the treatment aims at treating the cause. But one should also remember that many types of hair loss are amenable to the treatment, but some are not. So a dermatologist can help you to uh, understand the pathology as well as the treatment options and what to expect. Uh, coming to the treatment, as we said earlier, we have to treat the underlying disease and also we have to find out if there are any deficiencies, you have to correct the deficiencies, take a balanced diet and also uh, follow the uh, proper hair cosmetics, the hair styling and the proper uh, water that you use to shower your head. The hormonal therapy or the topical applications will be decided by your dermatologist according to your condition. Now, uh, these days, the novel treatment called as platelet-rich plasma therapy or the PRP in which we use the growth factors that are present in the platelets of the blood to promote hair growth. So we separate the plasma which is rich in platelets and re-inject back into the scalp and that helps a lot. And this is done in multiple sessions. Mesotherapy is another option where we give an uh, injection with a cocktail of vitamins and minerals into the scalp to promote hair growth. Hair transplantation is a permanent uh, cure for selected patients in which you relocate or transplant your own hair from the hair rich area to the hairless area. And nowadays many centers are doing it in affordable uh, prices. Laser therapy has been tried in many centers but the result is doubtful. Now coming to the temporary uh, cosmetic uh, treatment, one can go for hair fixing, hair weaving, uh, extensions and artificial hair fibers. Uh, apart from this, continued research is being going on in this field, so we can expect more effective and uh, cost-effective uh, management options in the future. Thank you.